Good morning. I hope you're having a beautiful day so far. We are talking today about the number one thing that really boosts your productivity with your wellness. Actually, it can boost your productivity for any area of your life. I am so glad you're here. Get ready. I'm going to be sharing this tip. This tip was what made me launch from, you know, getting things done, kind of seeing results, not really consistent, workouts were done half the time, meals were never planned. This was my life until I really nailed down this one ultimate productivity rule I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me here. My name is Tanessa Shears. I am a personal trainer and I am a wellness coach. My job is to help women find successful health habits that work on a regular basis and have them achieving, you know, the lives they want. You know, everyone's wanting to feel better. And at the end of the day, it's about the thoughts you think and about the habits you implement on a regular basis. So my job here is just to show up and teach you this so that you can get on track with your wellness. Okay, so I'm just gonna straighten this out here. There we go. Okay, so here's the big tip. And then I'm gonna go through a reason why this is so important. And then I'm gonna give you four actionable strategies on how to put this into place right now. Okay, so my rule is go to bed every day with a plan for the next day. Go to bed every day with a plan for the next day. So I can tell you for a 100% fact that the clients of mine that schedule in their wellness, and you guys, if you've been following a lot of these tips and videos I've been sharing with you, you will know I say this over and over again. The clients of mine and myself, when we are following a plan for the week, we are so much more successful with our habits. So that big rule we're talking about is go to bed every day with a plan for the next day. So I'm reading a book right now. It's called High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. Uh, give me a heart in the comment below if you've heard this book. It's on your reading list or you've read it already. So basically, this book has talked about the fact that all people that are high performing in their lives, and it doesn't matter whether it's their career, their relationships, their health, they all have these six habits in common. And the degree to which you're successful doesn't have anything to do with your age, your gender, your race, your social economic status. They found that there were six habits that were consistent across all high performers in all industries and in all areas of life. And the very first habit that they talk about in this book, um, High Performance Habits, is seek clarity. Seek clarity clarity. So what that means is that you have a clear vision for who you are, what you want, and where you're going with your life. And when I read this, it made so much sense why my habit of going to bed with a plan for the next day was so effective because essentially when you wake up in the morning with a general plan for what you want to do for the day, it says you are seeking clarity on your day. And when you have defined goals, defined outcomes, and clarity on what you want with your health, whether that, you know, be to fit into a certain size dress, or to start eating better, or to get, you know, get to sleep on time at night. If you have clarity on those goals and those habits, you are way more likely to achieve them. So if we're talking about seeking clarity and going to bed every day with a plan, that is going to change the game. And so... One of the other things I want to talk about is the importance of planning is because it helps you develop consistent behaviors and patterns. So let's use the example of maybe you're wanting to fit into a certain size dress coming up or something like that. So how you get to that goal, that body shape, that wellness lifestyle that you want, how you get there is essentially how you stay there. So if you know that to get into, you know, the body shape you want, to be exercising regularly, to be eating well, the effort that you put in to get to that goal is how you maintain it. So if you are doing something that you, you can't sustain on your calendar long term, you likely aren't going to be able to maintain the outcome of that goal when you get there. So let's do something really concrete. So the goal, maybe let's just do something we can all really understand. A goal to lose 10 pounds. And you know in order to lose that 10 pounds, you need to be able to be aware of your thinking around your food. You need to be able to eat healthy and make good choices. You need to stop overeating if that's what you need to be doing. You need to be exercising four to five times a week. You need to be optimizing your sleep. 
if these are the things that go into this 10 pound weight loss, these are the things that are going to be on your schedule for the life as long as you want to maintain that weight loss. And this can go the same with any habit you like, whether that be, you know, you're growing a business or you're raising children. Any The effort that you put into the process is the same effort it is going to take to maintain the outcome. That is why you need to have stuff scheduled for success. All right. So we're going to go through four things really quick. This is our four-step action plan that you can implement today to help you go to bed every day with a plan for the next day. So number one is I want you to choose your planning method. So everyone's a little bit different in how they like to plan. Um, I'm actually a paper and a digital planner girl, and it really just depends on what I'm planning. And if if that's something that's interesting to you is how I do my day-by-day -day plan specifically, leave me a comment below. Uh, tell me that you want to see a detailed video on how I do my planning, and I can definitely do one of those. Um, but essentially, I want you to choose your planning method. So you can choose a notebook. You can choose, you know, just a planner, just a regular, like, you know, the agendas you get. You can choose to do, um, you know, Google Calendar, the calendar that goes on your phone, any of those works for me. So step number one, choose your method of planning. Number two is I want you to select your planning time. So I know that we said go to bed every day with a plan for the next day. So if you have a lot of variation in your days, meaning maybe you have people that rely on you regularly and their schedules are irregular, maybe you have kids that need to be picked up and dropped off, so maybe you need to do your planning the night before. Uh, if you have the option, here's what I'm going to recommend. I would highly recommend you choose one day per week to do your planning for the following week. And of course, this has to be if your schedule allows it. But what I like to do is I like to choose either a Friday or a Sunday. Here's a big hint. Never plan your week on a Monday. Never plan your week on a Monday. You want to start Monday with an exact outline of what you need to be doing each week each day that week. So I always do mine on Sunday night. I like to sit down, but I mean, if, like I said, if your schedule is super variable, then I want you to be doing it at least the night before so you have a very clear plan of the important tasks that need to get done that next day. So step one, choose a method of planning. Step two, choose a time of day and the day of week that you're going to plan for your habits and activities that are going to get you towards your goals. Number three, I need you to block in all of your major tasks that are relative to your goals. So let's go back to our example of, you know, wanting to get into a certain dress size. Maybe it's for your birthday coming up or a holiday event. So if this is the primary goal you were going to focus on, what you were going to do is you're going to look out over your week and you have your idea of what you need to get done. So maybe you need to get in your four workouts. You need to be planning an hour for your meal planning, an hour for your grocery shopping. All of these things need to come together. So what you are going to do then is put those things in first. These are going to be your non-negotiables for the week. And how your week is going to go is you're going to plan around these things that are going to get you towards your goal. So if you know that you need to get in four workouts a week and you're planning on a Sunday night, you should be able to look at your calendar and find time blocks to slot those four workouts in. So you're not just going to write on your calendar workout. You're going to be writing on there workout, what you're doing, what time, and where. And as I always like to say, make sure you block enough time for the entire event. If you're blocking off workout of an hour, but you didn't account for the time it takes to drive to the gym, maybe get your workout done, go home, take a shower, blow dry your hair, all of that stuff in there, then you're going to find that you're overwhelmed because you didn't plan for that. And then things are going to fall off the bottom of your task list and you're going to start to feel very defeated at the end of the day. So make sure you're planning enough time for the entire event. If you're going grocery shopping, don't forget to plan for time to take your food home, take it out of the bags, wash anything that needs to be you know, separate out your meats and freezer bags, put everything in the freezer. It has to be put away. That time needs to be accounted for too. So when your big blocks are in your calendar, so if you're, um, you know, looking to get into your size, whatever dress, you have to have your workouts blocked in, you have to have your grocery shopping blocked in, your meal planning blocked in, your prep time blocked in. Um, you need to be thinking about all the factors that are going to go into achieving that goal and they need to go on your calendar first. If your goal is important to you, it must be scheduled on your calendar. 
So then what you're going to do is after you've blocked in all of your major tasks, then you start to fill in the little tasks of the week into your calendar. So this is where I like to do things like if I need to do a load of laundry that day, it is going to go in. But I know that if I'm serious about what I want to achieve, there are some things that must take priority. And yeah, there are some days where you're going to need to do your laundry, but on the most days you want to make sure that you block the time for the things that matter. So I'm going to go over those four tips really quick. Number one, you're going to choose your method of planning, whether it's, you know, online, you're doing a paper planner, whatever you want to do. Number two is I want you to choose one day a week, ideally, to do your planning for the entire week. If that's not possible, you're going to do it the night before at minimum. Number three, block in all your major tasks first that are relative to your goal. Put them in your schedule and allow enough time to complete them. And step four, then you're going to fill in the gaps with all the other little tasks that you do on a regular basis. So one thing that is really interesting and I want to challenge you, if you are a planner, I want you to think about this. I want you to look back through your calendar or your planner over the last couple weeks. Can you see specific tasks in there that lead you towards the goal you're working towards right now? If I can look through your calendar and not see scheduled time towards your goal, I can guarantee you that your goal is going to be inconsistent, you might not achieve it, you might fall off the wagon a whole bunch of times. So I really want you to make sure that your time is accounted for, for the things that matter. If you want to move your life forward and you know, stop starting every Monday, things need to be in your schedule ahead of time. Don't let me be able to look into your calendar over the past month or two and see blank spaces where there should be time for your goals. And I mean, it's all about making it work. Your schedule is different than my schedule is different than someone else's schedule. So we all just have to follow these general four guidelines I gave you and fit in time that works for you. And if you only have 20 minutes to do a workout, that's okay. 20 minutes of a good solid walk or doing at home exercises is always going to be better than skipping it entirely. Here's a secret. Exercise is cumulative in bouts of 10 minutes or greater. Did you know that? So if you do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes on your lunch break, 10 minutes at night, it's actually equivalent to a 30 minute workout. So this is something that you can start to implement if your schedule is super tight. So I want you to live by this mantra this week. Go to bed every day with a very clear plan for what you want to achieve tomorrow. So I want to ask you right now, are you going to go to, a bed, to bed tonight with a plan and what is the number one scheduled priority on your list tomorrow that you need to get done to move the needle forward in your health and wellness. I'd love to hear about it. Leave me a comment below and I will see you guys later on this week. Don't forget, I am doing my very first Black Friday to Cyber Monday deal. I am sharing exactly how I do all of my meal planning and I have packaged it into a really cool little mini course. I'm selling it 80% off. It's only $9. You're getting all the recipes that I actually am cooking in my household on a regular basis. So it was my grocery shopping system. So keep your eyes out for that. There will be an email going out on Friday morning and the link will go live Friday morning so you can get your hands on that and you know I will do anything that you need to get you meal planning. So let's work together on this you guys. The link will go live on my Facebook and email on Friday morning. Have a beautiful week you guys. Let's get planning and wake up tomorrow with clarity on your day. Take care. Bye.